What's going on YouTube? This is Lito Diaz with Quick Trips and Tips. And I'm gonna give you some quick tips on how to make the best out of your quick trip to Santiago, Chile. All right, so let's talk about transportation, getting from the airport to the city center, to your Airbnb, to your hotel. Um, the airport's actually pretty close to the city center of Santiago, it's about 20 minutes. My recommendation is using an Uber because you know you put your directions, you're gonna go straight there. Uber's a lot cheaper than a taxi. Um, I just trust Uber more than any other system. I, in my other videos, there I do recommend using a metro if like if the metro system is like right there at the airport um, and it's a direct line. But sometimes you waste a lot of time figuring out how many stops you gotta take and and all that. There is various, like I said, there is various ways to get into your destination, like a shuttle service that's called TransVip or TransVIP. I'll put the link down below if you if that's an option that you want to take. Um, it is a shared bus system. Um, and it's about 10 bucks, but just keep in mind that you'll probably have various stops making your um, time to get to where your destination longer. So 20 bucks versus 10 bucks, me personally, I'll just pay the 20 bucks and go straight to my Airbnb, hotel, whatever, and get my day started. All right, so when it comes to taxis, one of the reasons that um, I was recommended not to use them is because if you don't speak Spanish and they know that you are not a local, they're gonna probably try to rip you off. They're gonna upcharge you. Taxis are black, have a yellow roof, and they have an orange tag. Someone's trying to give you a ride somewhere, do not take it. Taxis have that specific color scheme for a reason. All right, so once you're in the city to get around, other than walking, there are bike rentals, um, there is a bus system, and there is a metro system. The metro system is very, very congested, especially in the morning and the afternoons. Um, so it makes you really vulnerable to getting pickpocketed. Um, you're, in, you're packed in there like a sardine, and that's where you know thieves really try to take advantage of um, tourists. So I recommend still using Uber. The average price for an Uber is two to three bucks, you know, short little rides here and there. The longest ride I took was about 12 minutes, and that was about 10 bucks. So average two to 10 bucks um, to get around all of Santiago using Uber. All right, so let's talk about where to stay. What is the best area for you to be in walking distance to everything next to all the major sites, um, next to pubs, restaurants, and all that stuff. I stayed in this um, neighborhood called Mapocho. I was about maybe three to five minute walk to um, Plaza de Almas. I was right next to Cerro Santa Lucia. I was about a 15 minute walk to Cerro Santa Cristobal. I was in the downtown. All I had to do was leave my apartment complex, take a left or a right, and I was in it all. Walking around and getting to know the neighborhoods, um, I have two other recommendations that I would stay if I was going back. Um, Barrio La Estaria, Barrio Buena Vista. Barrio means neighborhood, so neighborhood Buena Vista, neighborhood La Estaria. Both are a little bit um, similar in the fact that they're very artistic. Ba uh, Barrio Buena Vista, you'll see like beautiful graffiti, not like just people tagging walls up. Like I'm talking about beautiful artwork, gra graffiti all over the walls. Um, that's like where everybody goes out at night. A lot of tourists go there, so you'll feel a lot safer. Um, there's so many pubs, restaurants, great places to get local food. La Estaria is more of like a bohemian um, hipster neighborhood. Again, has lots of restaurants, great pubs. I like La Estaria better because there was like more of, um, there was more like artwork. Uh, a lot of people selling their own artwork. Uh, I met a great photographer and I'm um, like linked up with him in Instagram. So I like La Estaria um, as well. So those are my three recommendations where I stayed, Mapacho, Buena Vista, or La Estaria. You'll be close to everything. All right, so what to do once you're in Santiago. Um, there are going to the day trips in a little bit, but the things that are in Santiago that a lot of them are in walking distance are Plaza de Almas. It's the city center square. There you can knock out the church, which is called Metropolitan Catedral. Um, beautiful cathedral. Walk inside, walk around Plaza de Almas. Um, it's, it's a beautiful square full of trees in the middle. So there's like shaded. And just walking around Plaza de Almas is pretty cool. Great restaurants, great pubs. Cerro San Cristobal and Cerro Santa Lucia. Cerro San Cristobal um, is the highest hill that Santiago has has a beautiful, uh, huge Virgin Mary statue, beautiful view of the entire city, depending on how bad the smog is, because Santiago does have a smog problem because of their geographical location. But beautiful views, and there's two, there's three ways to get there. You can hike it, you can get the funicular and teleferico. Uh, you can buy the pass for the funicular, like a round trip, 
um, I chose the combo, which is the funicular up and the teleferico down. And what's cool about that is you get a different view of the city, you know, while you're going up because one's in one side and the other one's the other side. And so when I, when I went up, I walked around the entire hill and then went down, down the teleferico and you get the view of like the metropolitan um, side of the city. So it's, that's definitely pretty awesome. And this is the price. Cerro Santa Lucia is, uh, is the one that I was like right next to. It's a smaller hill, still beautiful view um, of the city. Cerro Santa Lucia is beautiful. And then the great thing about Cerro Santa Lucia is going to my next recommendations because all you gotta do is just cross the street when you get down and you're in one of the markets that I recommend, which is uh, Mercado Artesanal, is where a lot of the locals make their own crafts and sell them. So you'll get a lot, a lot of uh, markets, <clears throat> I'm sorry, a lot of vendors selling their own um, souvenirs and stuff. That's like the place to get souvenirs or something that's handmade. The other market that I recommend is Mercado Central, Central Markets, and that's where you could get some great seafood. They have a fish market, they have a building in the middle, and there's the fish markets on like the outer part of the building, and then the inside there's a couple of restaurants serving that fresh fish, and you can get some souvenirs in there as well. Outside of the market, which is still part of the market, there's a bunch of vendors selling fruit, veggies, clothing, again, uh, souvenirs. So Mercado Central is the other one that I recommend. More to eat than anything. So if you're into seafood, that is the place to get some seafood. Because Santiago is so close to the beach, the desert, the Andes Mountains, there's amazing day trips. The ones, there's way more than, than what I did, obviously, because again, a quick trip. But these are the two that I recommend, but keep in mind that most of these will take at least half your day. The first one is Cajon del Maipo, which is the Andes Mountains. And I went to this place called El Embase del Yeso, which is this blue lagoon, as you see here. And it is just jaw dropping beautiful. It is a must. Um, it only cost me, I think it was like 38 bucks and included the ride there the trip to um, El Yeso, they let you walk around for like an hour and a half once you're there, plenty of time. And then, then you get, you, they serve you wine and they have a little lunch and then they bring you, they bring you back. Um, I got back around like 4 p.m. So definitely Cajon de Maipo, um, again, the Andes Mountains, just the ride up there, it's just, oh man, it's just so beautiful. Really, 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 really recommend visiting the Cajon de Maipo. All right, so next is if you're into wine, um, checking out one of the wineries and doing a wine tour. I went to um, the winery Santa Rita wine because I met a couple of locals and that was their favorite wine. And they were like, man, all the places are real touristy. This place is usually like real laid back, real chill. And we like it. We actually like their wine better than all the ones that are like super touristy and, and famous. So the Santa Rita wine, it cost me $34 for a bike tour. Um, which I've never done a, a wine tour on a bike. So that was actually really cool. The backdrop is the mountains, you're in the vineyards, you go up to this hill, they serve you white wine up there, then you come down the hill, they, they, you get to play with like deer, and then you have a wine tasting. So one, the, one of the wineries, checking out a wine, and you don't have to check Santa Rita, even though I recommend it, amazing wine, um, but uh, they have many wineries. And again, those are the things that I did, but for day trips, but there is the beach, which is about an hour and a half away. It's called um, Valparaiso. And then there's the desert if you go up north. But um, those are the two uh, day trips that I recommend. Definitely checking out the Andes Mountains and checking out and doing a wine tour. All right, so food and drink. My recommendations are straight from a local's mouth. I didn't do any research while I was there or before I was there about what to drink or eat. I would literally just talk to a local, um, a random person or someone that I met on a tour or something and be like, hey man, what do you recommend that I eat or try or anything like that? So the three things, number one is kind of like obvious if you're in South America, empanadas. All right, check, next. So something that you definitely want to try that is like what the locals are like, oh man, this is what we have, this is what we eat all the time. It's called chorillana. It's French fries with meat, um, eggs, and caramelized onions. Kind of like for you Canadians out there, like poutine, but a little bit different. All right, and so for you seafood lovers, um, seafood in general in Chile was really, really good. But they have um, their own um, type of cod. It's called melusa, and it's, it comes from the southern portion or southern area of Chile. And again, it's like a white flaky fish compared to cod. 
really delicious and you can find it everywhere. So those are my actual food items that I recommend. All right, so drinks will be Mote Con Juecillo. You'll find this um, all over the streets, local vendors selling it everywhere. And it's like this sweet drink with like see, soft seeds inside and a ball. I don't even know what it is, to be honest. But it, I tried it and it's delicious and it's $1.50. So definitely try it. It's sweet, it's good, it's really good. Next is Pisco Sours. Um, if you have ever been to Peru, you know that they have amazing Pisco Sours. Something you might not know is that Chile and Peru are constantly, and they've always been like, I made it first, where we have the best Pisco Sour. And then Peru is like, no, we made it first and we have the best Pisco Sour. They are, they do taste a little bit different. I think they're both great. Um, the Chilean one is great. So that's definitely something that if you have tried the one from Peru, try the one from Chile, that way you can compare them yourself. Um, delicious drink. Pisco sours are awesome. The next thing will be Terremoto. And I just want you to try this because I want you to suffer as much as I did because I thought it was absolutely disgusting. I couldn't put it down. It was so sweet. It's this liquor drink and then they put like pineapple ice cream on top and you're supposed to like stir it and drink it. I couldn't, I only drank like maybe three sips. It was just so, so sweet. But I heard from some of the locals that like you drink one or two of those and you're done, you're, you're gone. All right, so with all that said, these are the average prices on the high side, like mid to high side for Santiago. Um, I have it written down. So the average meal is gonna be about seven bucks. Um, beer, anywhere from like $2 to $2.50. Coffee, two fifty. dollars Water bottle, a dollar. Milk, um, a gallon of milk, about $4.30. A wine bottle, a bottle of wine, six bucks. A taxi, anywhere from three to five dollars or higher because it'll probably rip you off if you don't know Spanish. And an Uber, two to three bucks. Five minute rides here and there. The most I spent was $10 and that was again for like a 12 minute ride. Airbnbs, you have your, if you want your own apartment, anywhere from 30 to $50. If you want just a room, like a, <clears throat> a private room, 10 to 30 bucks. All right, so those are my quick tips for a quick trip to Santiago, Chile. I hope it helped a little bit. Um, if you have any questions, ask me down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Check out my actual Santiago video, which is down in the description, in the description down below, and I'll put the link to in one of these corners. Um, in that video, you'll actually basically follow me on my trip to Santiago. Like always, thanks for watching and have a great day. And if you hit like or subscribe, I'm not gonna be mad at you.